worship you. Any worshipers in the house this morning? Are there any worshipers in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, worship God in the house this morning. Take a little time out to tell God thank you. Come on, worship God in the house this morning. No matter how bad your week has been, you're still breathing, you're still alive. God is still taking care of you. You ought to worship God this morning. You ought to tell God thank you today. You ought not mind praising God for all he's done for you. Not for somebody else, but what he did in your life. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If God has done anything for you, give him a hand clap of praise. I said if he's done something for you. If you don't think he's done nothing for you, then I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking to somebody that's here now because they know that God spared their life once again. So if God has done something for you, you ought to tell God thank you. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. I believe somebody showed up with their mind on praising God this morning. I believe somebody walked up in this house this morning knowing that everything ain't going like you wanted to go. But you already had it made up in your mind. Regardless of what I've been dealing with. When I enter into his gates. I'm going to enter with thanksgiving. And when I enter into his courts. I'm going to enter with praise. Because I believe that it don't matter what I'm dealing with. My God is still able. Anybody know he's able? Tell somebody he's still able. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I don't care what you think. I don't care how you feel about it. All I know, my God is still able. you're crying right now but tell them you don't know why I'm crying I'm crying because I got a celebration going on down in my spirit tell them don't worry about me I feel good right now I feel like praising God right now hallelujah Oh, 
Oh, come on, praise God in the house. It's all right. It's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with praising God. It's all right. Anybody got a praise on your lip? Anybody got a praise on your lip today? For a minute, Melanie. Stay right there. Stay right there. I feel so. Show you something. Keep it. Stay right there, Melanie. Stay right there. I got to tell you what's in my spirit right now. See, you were looking at them little children. Like, look at the children. But when they were ministering, I saw something happening. And it wasn't the children. They were speaking something to me. Let me show you what happened. I want you to follow me. Go with me now. Position yourself. Right here. Come on, because I'm telling you, I felt that thing. I, I, I knew what was going on. Position yourself. Drop down a little bit. Oh. 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 I show glory. What's going on? 
going on? Anybody know what's going on? Somebody need a breakthrough in the house. Somebody need a deliverance in the house. Somebody need a healing in the house. I dare you to praise God like you ain't never prayed him before. Go follow the spirit of the Lord. Did we just go follow the spirit? Come on, it's a new day. Can I say that again? I say it's a new day. All that happened yesterday was in yesterday, but today is a new day. And I dare you to press forward in this new day. Forgetting those things that are behind you. I dare you to press. Go a little low for me. Go a little low. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop, because see, it's something about the music. I, I read when David used to be feeling kind of down, he, he would call for the musicians. And, and when the musicians came in and they started playing on the harp and on the timbrel and, and, and beat the drums, I read that David's spirit started to be soothed. So, so don't, don't, don't just, 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 just. to break some chains in the house. Some of you done had a hard week. I'm just being real. That, that's life, ain't it? Some of you been dealing with a situation this week that made you feel like all hope of this thing getting better is lost. Am I talking to somebody? The enemy been telling you that you've been defeated. That God ain't gonna help you. But let me speak one word in your spirit. The word for you is victory. Somebody say victory. Oh, you ain't you don't you ain't pre can somebody say victory? Stand up, don't stay where you are, don't sit down. Close that up. I'm not coming back. Somebody in the house got a situation that you're going through that you know that if God don't intervene, then you're just about to lose your mind. Let me tell you where you are. Somebody in the house, God done brought you out of Egypt, and now you find yourself at the Red Sea. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
You done seen how God done brought you out with a mighty hand. You've been celebrating and telling people how good God is. And now you done found yourself stuck between a rock and a hard place. You had the Red Sea. Your enemy coming up behind you. You look to the left. It's blocked on the left. You look to the right. Come on, don't get tired of playing the music. Come on, don't stop me. Walls on the right side. You try to back up. Now you're back against the wall. Everywhere you look, there's no way out. The only thing in front of you is a Red Sea. Now watch God. You ended up at the Red Sea because God took you there. Anytime God takes you to a place where you can't see no way out, you ought to start celebrating right then. Watch this. God only takes us to the Red Sea because he knows that once I get you there, then you got to depend on me and nobody else. So there you are. I'm talking to somebody because I felt this thing in my spirit before I even... There you are. Ain't got no way out. And what make it even worse... Pharaoh, who is your past, trying to catch up with you. You've been running from your past. You've been getting away from it all this time. But now God got you in a place where if you don't have his help, then your past going to get you. But somebody say, just when I needed him the most, Jesus stepped right in. Anybody needing to step into your stuff right now? They had you at the Red Sea, Sister Connie. God done took you there. Now that you're there, you complaining. Don't act like you've never done it before. God brought you out of all of that. Now that you are in this point in your life, now you're talking about, I wish I would have stayed back there where I was. How many of you ever felt like, don't lie, I didn't say you wouldn't say, how many of you ever felt like at some point in this Christian walk, you wish you would have stayed where you was? Okay, since y'all want to act like that, I'll act like that too. You thought you had it better when you were in the liquor bar. deal with all this stuff when you got drunk every weekend when you hung out with Michael and them every weekend you didn't have to deal with what you were dealing with look like everything was going all right in your life but now you at the Red Sea but here's what I
what I like about being at the Red Sea. That's the time that God will open up some stuff. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. That's the time that God will split that thing right down the middle and open it up. So that you can walk through on dry ground. Thank you, Sister Shaka. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, open it up, Lord. Somebody need to open it up. Somebody say, open it up. Here I am. Sister Paula, he's going to open it up for me now. Here I am walking through. I'm just walking through. Notice something now. While I'm walking, trouble's still over there. Trouble's still over there. But I'm still. Somebody ain't feeling me in here. But I'm still walking. Look, I'm not denying that my trouble is still all around me, but I'm still. Can I be real about it? Every now and then while I'm still walking, when I look back, I can see the enemy on his way. But even though I see the enemy, I'm... Oh, help us in here, Holy Ghost. Now watch this. As long as I'm still walking, the enemy can't catch up with me. As long as I'm still walking, I don't care if the enemy is within shouting distance. Walk with me. As long as I keep on walking by faith and not by sight. Keep on walking behind me. Watch this now. Watch this. Good God about it. I'm walking. I'm going to keep on walking until I walk out. Stay down now. I'm at the end of my wilderness and I'm walking out. Come here, water. Come here, water. You get on that side. You get on that side. I'm walking out face him. You the water. I just walked out. And as I walk out, God go tell the water, cut it up. God said, I told him to go forward and as long as he kept on moving, I'm going to cover the enemy up. I wish I had a witness in the house. God said, not only that, God said, I'm going to swallow him up. God said, I'm going to swallow him up. Look at your neighbor and say, keep walking. Tell him to go forward. God got this. Keep it moving. And let God deal with your enemy. How many you know you'll make your enemy your foot too? <laughs> but here's what I was trying to get you to. Stay there. Cover him up. Don't treat him like you love him. Cover him up. He been messing with you and been trying to come back up to get you. Let him know that you're a warrior of the Lord. Now. Cover him up. Let him know you can't come back here no more. You see that? Here's where I'm trying to get you to. Watch this now. He's covered. He 
least drown in God's water. Let me show you why God is covering up. Because see, God already knows that if he don't cover him up, if he don't totally get rid of my past, then there's an opportunity that I might want to go back. But God said, no! You dealt with that thing long enough. So whatever happened in your past, God said, I'm drowning that thing right now. He said, I'm going to make it where you can't go back. Anybody like Pastor tried to go back, but God just wouldn't let you go back? You ought to tell God, thank you. That you wouldn't let me go back. Now, stay right there. Notice up. God got him covered. He drowned him in his water. He wouldn't let me be covered by this water. But while I was walking, I was being covered by the blood. Can, can I help you with this? God told him when he told him to go, he said, before you go, I'm going to pass over your door that night when I see the So look, I'm going to help somebody. So look, as you're walking, as you're journeying on this Christian journey and that enemy just keep on messing with you, just always keep in mind, no matter how hard he try to hit me, I'm covered. Somebody say I'm covered. Tell somebody, you might not see my covering, but I know I'm covered. That's why the way you've been treating me, you can't harm me, because I know I'm that's why I heard about how you've been talking about me, but I'm still. That's why I heard about how you say I ain't hit no nothing, but I'm still. Somebody been sick, body racking with pain, but you're still covered by the blood of Jesus. I command you right now by the blood of Jesus don't let her fall I command you right now to believe God in this house and know that whatever your condition is God is able to move mountains has he ever moved mountains in your life has he ever did a miracle in your life if God has worked in your life I dare you to tell God thank you tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. I tell you right now, the Lord is moving in this place. Anybody want the Lord to move in your life? Don't play with me in the house. I said, do you want the Lord to move in this house? Why don't you praise him right now? Why don't you tell him thank you right now? I'm talking about before you come out. Don't you tell them, Lord, I thank you for my trouble, for my heartache, for my pain. I thank you for healing, for deliverance, for breakthrough. I thank you. I thank you. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood 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 of Jesus. In this house right now. The blood. The blood. I said the blood. The blood. Will bring peace. In the midst of a storm. 
the blood will make a way out of no way. The blood will heal broken hearts. The blood will heal all sickness. It'll heal all diseases. We plead the blood in the house. Stand up in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood in the name of Jesus. We declare victory in the house in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout victory in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout victory. Somebody shout victory. Somebody tell God thank you in the name of Jesus. Miracles. We declare it right now. Miracles. We declare it right now in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if you ask anything in my name and in my will, then I will do it. God, we asking right now that you will calm the rage and see, that you will walk on the water and come see about your child in the name of Jesus. We declare healing right now. We declare peace right now. We declare strength right now. Open your eyes, Sister Lee. We declare it dawn. We declare it dawn. The devil can't have no victory in here. We're in God's house. We're in God's place. And the devil can't do what he want to do. Not in God's place. We ain't calling no ambulance today. We calling on the doctor. I said we calling on the doctor. We calling on the doctor that ain't never lost a kid. Come on, Ryan, Sister Lee. Refresh right now. Refresh her right now, Jesus. From the top of her head, to the sole of her feet. Bring strength back in her body right now. <laughs> she don't want to sit down yet because she feel her help coming on. Quiet just a little bit. Give me some of that power in the name of Jesus. Just a little bit. See, y'all like to come to church and just have a little church as usual and get up and want to walk out. But I come to church looking for a greater experience. I want to know God in a different way. I want to be able to lay hands on somebody and the dad got to get up and walk. be tired of the devil treating you any kind of way. Yes, you ought to be tired of the devil handling you. You know, a uh, child of God, you need to start standing up and taking your authority. Hallelujah, Jesus. The chain breaker is in the house. The chain breaker is in the house. Say that. Say that. The chain breaker is say in the that. house. Say that. The say chain that. breaker is in the house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Break every chain, God. Break every yoke, God. We declare it in the name of Jesus. We declare it in the name of Jesus. We got to speak to it and tell it that it don't have no place here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, pray those chains. Say pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. We speak those things that are not as though they were. We declare that the chains are broken over my life, 
over my family, over my anointing, over my church family. Hallelujah, Jesus. We declare that the chains are broken. Yeah, walk, walk a little bit. 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 Walk a little Say break. I'm feeling a little free. I'm feeling a little lighter. Break. Don't say. Say break. I can lift up my hands and say break every chain. Don't say. Say break. No more shackles along my feet. I can walk free. Break. Say chain. Say break. Whatever the enemy tries to throw my way, say break it, God. Those chains, say break. The enemy try to play with your mind, say break. Those chains, say break. Somebody need it over their marriage, say break. Come on, come on, tell them break, break, say break, tell them break, 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 God, say break. Those chains. Hallelujah, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Don't say, say break. I'm already walking like I got the victory. Say break. Don't say, say break. Life and death lies in the power of your tongue. Say that. Say that. Say that. Say that. Don't say, say break. You got the command it to go. Say break. Break. Don't say. Say break. We command you. We command you. Break. We bind you up and we send you down to the pits of hell. Leave you alone. Hey. Say break. break. Those chains. Say break. I'm no longer bound. I'm no longer trained. Say chain. Say break. break. You got to hear it in the spirit. Break. You got to see yourself coming yeah. out our way. Yeah. That's right. Say That's break. Right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Say break every chain. Those chains. Say break. Hallelujah. There is power. That's it, right there, right there. Hear that today. Somebody need to hear that today. There is power. Not in pastor, not in preacher. There's power in Jesus' name. There is power in the name of Jesus. You heard that? Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. To break every chain. God Almighty. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Where the army of the Lord is. There's an army. Wait a Rising up. Come on, God needs some soldiers. Come on, God. Yeah. Yeah. Let me Why you have to see? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There's an army. Yeah, God. Break every chain. Yeah, God. Break every chain. Yeah, God. Break every chain. Y'all don't know. See, when you're serious, when you're serious, 
serious about doing better by God. When you don't want to be in the way. When you know that I need to do better. y'all know. Don't try to act like you don't know. That ain't it. Somebody ought to tell God thank you. Listen to me today. If you want to be helped by God, God will help you. But there, are, there got to be sincerity when you cry out to God. God don't care nothing about your tears if you ain't real about it. You can cry all you want, but God knows the heart. And if you're not sincere, but if you truly want some help, God will help you. Let me tell you something, believer. I'm talking to believers now. Stop going around here listening to other so-called believers that you know ain't living right. Stop letting them give you counsel. If they can't give you what the word says, then you tell them thank you, but no thank you. We're trying to live right. We're trying to grow the way God wants us to grow. And the only way you can do that, when somebody wrongs you, you got to be willing to forgive them. Anybody got some forgiveness in your spirit? Anybody got some forgiveness in God said, if you don't forgive them, then he ain't going to forgive you. Let me say, everybody in here right now that's perfect, shout hallelujah. Everybody in here that ain't got no faults, that don't never do wrong, can I tell you something? Don't come back here no more. Please don't. Because the Bible said those that are well need not a physician. If you ain't got no kind of fault, you always right about everything you do, you don't need to come to church. You come to church because there's some things that God is still working on in you that you need help with. So listen, so if you know, I got to be real with you today because I'm, I'm tired, y'all. Since you know that you ain't all the way right, then lower your expectation of somebody else all the way right. If you know that you get mad sometimes and do stuff, say stuff, act like you ought not to act sometimes, then when somebody do it to you, then you ought to know how they feel. I know why I'm here, Sister Shepherd. Because we got too many church folk looking for perfection in their brothers and sisters. Too many of y'all think 
that because somebody go to church, then they supposed to be perfect. The devil is a lie. They supposed to be striving for perfection. But as long as you live on this earth, you'll never be perfect. So stop trying to hold folk to that standard. Tell me, I thought he's supposed to be a preacher. Yeah, I'm a preacher. I don't know why pastor act like that. You say what you want to say. I know when Jesus cracked the sky, I'm going to heaven. I know that much. I don't have no doubt about that in my mind. And I promise you, I can make you this promise standing in the house of God. If I ever mistreat you, I promise you, it definitely couldn't have been intentional. I say that with God right here in this house. It couldn't have been intentional. So don't hold me to a perfect standing. Because I ain't none of Jesus. Don't call me as if I'm Jesus. Because I can't fix your stuff. me and say pastor can you give me some scriptures because the scriptures can heal my situation do you hear me look around look at all these t-shirts look at them you see all these t-shirts E man you wait what does it mean? Listen to you now. T-shirts. 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 I can promise you every one of you in here that got on T-shirts, and I ain't talking about you, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. When you put that T-shirt on in the morning, you didn't feel no cleaner before than before you put it on. Why you say that, Pastor? Because I need you to know ain't no power in that t-shirt you're wearing. Keep wearing the t-shirt. Now, let me, I'm, I'm, I ain't picking They're beautiful t-shirts. But there is no cleaning in the t-shirts you're wearing. All the power, all the cleaning that you need is found in the word of God. So stop going around here thinking you represent us because you're putting on our t-shirt. Can I tell you a secret? I don't be, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. So don't be mean, Pastor. But be real with me. If you're going to wear our t shirt, listen to me. If you're going to wear our t shirt on the outside, then you need to start wearing the word on the inside. Don't be wearing our t-shirt cutting the food down at Walmart. Don't be wearing our t-shirt going out to my you giving somebody a piece of your mind. If you go wear our t-shirt, you need to back up and think about your behavior before you leave home. You know why, Pastor? You know why? Because when they see you act up, they ain't gonna say you acted up. They just say, them folk down there at that church. They ain't hear no nothing. Somebody come up, Pastor. Let me tell you about one of your members. When they say that, I said, I don't want to hear it. Because, see, if you mean them good, you're gonna come up and say, Pastor. 
Sister, so and so down at your church know they blessed me today. That's what I want to hear. Do you hear me? God's trying to move us. He's trying to move us. But you're messing us up. You can look at me crazy all you want. I say, you're messing us up. Stop playing with God. If you ain't going to live right, get out of the choir. Yeah, I'm calling you right. If you don't want to live right, you got it made up in your mind right now that I ain't ready to live right. We don't need you singing to us. Get out of the choir. I'd rather hear somebody that can't hardly sing and let God just do the anointing and it'll come off all right. That's right. That's right. Brother Rogers, Deep, all y'all. Monte, Charles, Hosey, Mobley, Dempsey. If you don't want to live right, get off our deacon bowl. We don't need no dirty hand touching clean money. Shocker, Hosey, Dunlap, Williams. If you don't want to live right, stop preaching that stuff you ain't living. If you don't believe that God is able to heal, stop preparing a sermon talking about healing. Usher, you don't want to live right? Hold your hand up, Usher. You are, you still Usher. If you don't want to live right, take a seat in the congregation and let somebody else smile at the folk. Lay member, you know, the one that sit at the pews every Sunday. I ain't forgot about you. If you don't want to live right, Stop going around talking about I'm a member of Emmanuel. <laughs> Some of you cut the food so bad I'll be scared to tell somebody. Yeah, they go to. When they say, yeah, you know, you know. Why are you saying all this? I got a call just this week. Listen to me. Somebody want to know. That's how they treat me like that. And they call themselves go to your church. First of all, I ain't got no church. That's the first thing. That, that, that's, that's, that first and foremost, that this house of prayer belongs to Jesus. Secondly, I need to know what are you doing to treat them right? See, a lot of times, folk get mistreated because they always mistreat folk. The Bible say you reap what you sow. If you want it for free, the Bible says sow yourself. But can, let, me, let me help you though. One thing about pastor, I don't want to talk to nobody that's going to talk about Emmanuel. 
I'm going to be nice to them. I'm going to be cordial. But I can promise you, I know how to compartmentalize. You can be talking to me and I ain't hearing a word you saying. Because, see, I can't take that stuff in my spirit. Because, see, I got to go off of what you show me. I can't be going off of what everybody else say. And I believe that if I go off of what you show me, the spirit in me going to let me know when you couldn't fool anyhow. Do you hear me? All I'm saying to you is if you want God to intervene in your life and in your stuff, you got to live right. How many weeks we've been talking about living right? Huh? How many weeks? You can't even keep up with them, can you? You better realize God always sends forth warnings before destruction. God said, I'll come and I'll move my candlestick. Out of this place. Do you hear me? Please hear me. I'm so serious with you. You can't keep on coming up in here acting like that. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to get quiet now. The Bible says who God loves, he's chastening. See, sometimes you need to know the truth about what you're doing and how you're acting and how you're carrying on. God ain't going to bless that. All of us in here got faults. That's not what I'm saying. I know all of us got faults. What I'm saying is those of you who want to keep on being in ministry, but you don't want to change the way you're living, you're the ones that I'm talking to. I said in front of you, and I said in front of everybody in this congregation, if you have no intentions on changing your, your living and you own one of our ministries, I'm asking you and I'm begging you to get off and sit down somewhere. Do you hear me? Some of y'all might think that's a hard saying. But God says when you're in those positions and you're not living the way God says, the Bible calls you a stranger. I don't need no stranger. I want to talk to somebody that, that, that's, a, that, that, that's a brother, that's a fellow citizen in Christ. Now listen to me. I ain't telling you to leave. I'm telling you to stop being a hindrance. Do you, ain't nobody telling you to go nowhere. I'd much rather sit down when I know I'm not doing right and let God work on me and then come on back. Ain't nothing wrong with sitting down for a little while. Especially when you know, I ain't doing this thing right, God. If I knew I wasn't living right, I promise you I couldn't pass to you. I promise you I couldn't. Because I'd be too scared of what God going to do to me. I can tell you to live right because I know that I'm living right. Do I mess up sometimes? Yeah! But one thing I do know, whatever I read in that word, that's what I'm trying to live. I know that. That's why I can tell you that. So cut it out. Let it go. And just I'm just going to say this, because you know anyway, all of you that was looking at that group over here, you know, had that wag your head in your spirit. Something wrong with you. Ain't no secrets around here. Everybody that know while everybody was hugged up over here, they started to rejoice in their spirit. That's why I got in and got me some of that. Because that's the kind of spirit that ought to rub off on somebody. I thank God for them. 
They ain't worried about what you were thinking. All they know is you my sister in Christ and let's get this thing right. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what the church is for. Let me say that again. The Bible says you got all against your brother or sister. Go to him in love. That's what it's about. So Emmanuel, I beg you. Look at that thing one by one. Look, take inventory on your own life. And when you look in the mirror and that that you see ain't right, clean it up. How many ladies in the house look in the mirror and your hair messed up and you walk right on out? Huh? Hosea, you ain't leaving that mirror, are you? You're going to make sure that whatever's wrong with your head, you're going to fix it before you walk out that room. And you're so concerned about looking right to wherever you get, when you get to wherever you're going, you're going to check the mirror again to make sure that I look right. That's how it ought to be about your spirit, man. You ought to always be looking to make improvements on your spirit, man. Live right. That's all I'm saying. Stop talking about it. And what they say, stop talking about it and be about it. We've been talking long enough. And don't think because God, because I don't see you, God sees you. Put the liquor bottle down. Amen. Amen. Put the beer can down. Amen. Put the marijuana down. Amen. Put somebody else's husband down. And somebody else's wife put them. Somebody said, put them down. If you a girl and got a girlfriend. If you a man and got a boyfriend. God has been dealing with us with that. Everywhere I go, that's been just flying out my mouth. Being gay is not all right. I'm telling you this because I love you. Let me say it again. Being gay, being a homosexual, being a lesbian. I love Barack Obama, but Barack Obama is dead wrong. It ain't all right. And let me help you. God did not make you that way. That's a lie. You can't help it. That's a lie. You got to want to change. Do you hear me? You can't play with that thing. You got to be serious. If you are a lesbian, you got to not want to be a lesbian anymore. Do you hear me? Now you can stop the music because I, I need them to hear me. I need to stop the music because I need you to hear me. That's a spirit. Do you hear me? That is a spirit. That's not who you are. That's a spirit of the Antichrist living in you. Alive. 
trying to get you to believe that God is okay with it. God understands. God is not okay with you going with the same member of your sect. Do you hear me? It ain't all right. I'm tired of seeing that. And then preachers get up talking about, well, we just got to love them. Yeah, I love you, but I ain't got to deal with that. I ain't got to sit here and say that that's all right. The devil is a lie. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's all right. That's not all right. I love you. God knows I do. I care a lot about it. That's why I'm telling you the truth. That behavior is wrong. And you keep coming up in the house of prayer thinking you're getting away with it. God is going to deal with you if you don't change. He's going to get you. That's about as plain as I can put it. He says in time past, he winked at it. I'm giving you a chance to get it right. But if you decide in your mind that since God ain't got me yet, I'm going to keep on pushing the envelope a little further. At some point, God going to cut you off. I would hate for you to be singing in the choir and you think you're singing because words start to come out your mouth. I would hate for you to be up there preaching and God make your tongue clear to your mouth and won't no words come out. I would hate for you to be up in the congregation just throwing your hands up in the air shouting hallelujah and God put your name on the wall and start writing your stuff. Examine yourself. That spirit, for those of you who don't know the history, that spirit, before we ever got here, is what destroyed this house of prayer. Am I right about it? And I'm telling you right now, you can get mad with me all you want, but I'm the keeper of the den, and I promise you, it will not happen in this house. We will not be destroyed because some folk don't want to do right. I'm telling you right now, you better get it together. Because where I am, I'm getting ready to pull you. Pull yourself. Change your behavior. Start living right. And we can keep on moving. But you are not going to keep staying on Emmanuel's ministry and don't want to live right. And when I come to you, I'm coming to you with facts. I ain't going by no hearsay. I'm coming to you with. So change it. Do you hear me? I'm ready to go. I told y'all two months ago, we can't go nowhere until you start living right. God ain't going to take all that stuff with him. Tell about you got to get here early to get a seat. Ain't you tired of getting your head to get a seat? Live right so you won't have to worry about no seat. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. That's all. That he's the only one man. 
Somebody, ain't anybody that mad right now? You mad because you don't want to change. I'm just, all right, all right. Say that. And you know what? It's okay for you to be mad with me. I'm okay with that. As long as you get mad enough to want to do better, that's what I want to hear. Get mad all you want. I can live with it. I'm all right with it. I love you anyhow. See all these young folk? Look at all these young folk. Older folks, y'all look at these young folk. We supposed to be showing them how to live. We supposed to be how they we supposed to be the standard for them. They supposed to look at look at Bro Rob and say, that's how I want to be like. Not just like Rob, but the Jesus that they see in Rob. That's how I want to live. They don't supposed to look at you and roll their eyes. They ought to look at you and say, now that's. You remember when you were growing up, there was somebody in the church that you, you really thought, you said, yeah, nah. That's how I want to be. That's how they ought to be able to look at you. It's sad when the young folk look at you and don't want to deal with you. That's an indictment. They don't want nothing to do with you. With your mean spirit itself. That's sad. They ought to look at Mina and say, hey, there's something and somebody in Mina. Somebody in glory. You ought to be separated. When somebody else is doing all that foolishness, you ought to be the one that say, hey, look, that ain't right. I'm a child of God. I can't go along with that. But no, I know I'm, I'm finna close. Every now and then you need a rap session. We ain't gonna get no better than how we live. We gotta live better. Do you, do you, do you, do you, uh, Wes Holson, ministers, Dunlap, ministers in the house. Can we tell somebody, like Peter and John, when they saw the man at the gate called Beautiful, listen, can we tell somebody, say, look on us? In other words, see my living. I want you to know that I'm trying to be an example that Jesus Christ wants me to be. I'm trying to be a living epistle. So look at me. But don't see me. See Jesus Christ in me. That's who I want to share with you. Is there anybody in the house that is not ashamed of how you're living to tell somebody else, look on me. That's where I'm trying to go. Get to a point to where you can tell somebody, I don't mind you watching how I'm living. Because I want to show you the right way. That's what we're talking about, my Lord. We're talking about showing somebody the right way. That's all we're talking about. Instead of trying to show somebody how you used to do it. Finally, men, men, any men, any men? Any men? Real men teach young boys the right way to live. Real men don't tell young boy, I, I know where you're at, boy. I used to do that same thing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. When you grow up, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna snow. Tell them that the way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I don't mind telling you what I did, but I don't want you doing what I did. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want you to go where I went. I don't want you throwing up, and I know that's gross, but I don't want you doing that. 
That's it. Give God a hand clap of praise. If you're here today and need, you need God to make a change in your life, as the choir sings, and we're going we're gonna to move quickly, why don't you come right now? Come right now. Don't be ashamed. Give God an opportunity to make a difference in your life. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Anybody in the house need him today? Only you can deliver. He's the only one. He's the only one. Can deliver. Be real with yourself today. If you need a change, come on. Lord, Don't pray for this thing. Don't nobody know the day or the hour that we're going to live here. None of us knows. So it behooves us right now. To get it right. Lord, I Lord, I'm Only you can have your way, Lord, right now.
all heads are bowed. Eternal God, our Father. We know, God, that there's nothing too hard for you. Your word declares that in everything, through prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. It also tells us, God, to pray without ceasing. The fervent, effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. Then you tell us to cast all our care on you because you carry for us you tell us to come boldly to the throne so that we may be able to find grace to help us in our time of need God here we are standing around your altar calling upon your name for there is no other name under heaven that carries the kind of power than the name of Jesus. God, some are around this altar right now want to be delivered from that thing that has them bound. Some, God, are standing in the gap for a loved one that may be sick they may be hospitalized. Some of God have behaviors that they just don't want to be in them anymore. But you told us in your word that whatever it is, if we ask anything in your name and don't ask amiss, that you will do it for us. So right now, Master, we ask that you will do it for everyone around this altar. God, you know what that it is. And we're praying, God, that you will handle it. For we know, God, that we can look to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help. It comes from you. Heal around this altar. Deliver around this altar. Set captives free around this altar. And let each and every one of them know that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Let them know, God, that with you all things are possible. Bless them now with the blessing that you see that they stand in need of. Bring them out now, God. Close up the Red Sea, Master. Walk them through the Red Sea. And let them know that you can bless their going out and their coming in from this time forth. We claim, declare, and decree that they will not be the same in the name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 Stay where you are. Will you please stay?
just before we receive the benediction, just letting you know that on next week, we will not be in attendance. Me and my wife, we hadn't taken a vacation in a while. And amen. And we're going to take us a little rest next week. Amen. Amen. And, and you will also be, we're asking if Sister Shaka will bring the message on next week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. She didn't know that. She probably looked crazy when I said that. <laughs> Amen. But we're still following our order of rotation. Amen. Amen. It is my understanding that she's next. Amen. Amen. In the order. And just let me say to you, Emmanuel, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity. Amen. To, to take some free time. And, and, and please don't ever think that I'm not thankful for God allowing me to be your pastor because of some of the things that you hear. Amen. Know that I'm not apologizing for what I said, Amen. but I, I need you to know that I am so thankful that God placed me right here where I am. Amen. Amen. To be able to pastor a people. Amen. Who are trying and looking to do better in the Lord. Amen. Bible study will still go on on Wednesday night. Amen. We'll just have preaching on Wednesday night. And please know, and my wife will tell you, I'm going to be fighting not to come to Cordia. Amen. Amen. You know, that gets to be a part of you. Amen. Someday during, one day during the week, but I'm going to stay away. And if I need to talk with somebody, I'll call Brother Hosea and ask him what's going on. And I know what he's going to tell me. Everything all right, Pastor. It's still rolling on. We still going. Amen. But just want to let you know, and God bless you, and may God keep you, if all hearts and minds are clear. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. And the children of God said,